All right, guys, welcome back to section three of the safety orientation part of this course. We are going to be talking about general guidelines. This is going to be the rules of the shop. The point of this is to do a little color association. We're going to put some signs that you would see on the job into perspective by comparing them to rules that we actually have. So you can kind of see that the rules that are there are there for a reason. Go ahead and get that one out of the way. Shop rules. See the blue notice sign here is a welding shop, ANC campus. It's going to be limited to the notice signs. The navy blue signs with the white contrast is what we're going to be uh, dealing with in this section. Here we go. No personal electronics are going to be allowed in the classroom or in the welding shop. This is a distraction and it can cause personal injury if you are distracted when you're out there in the shop. Somebody goes to holler at you, you got earbuds in, you can't hear them, you could very well be in a, the line of fire. So no phones, earbuds, tablets, you know, Bluetooth, speakers, laptops, that kind of stuff. Just leave that stuff in your bag. If you need to use the phone or something, you come talk to me about it. I'll let you go outside or, you know, whatever you need to do. Next, no food or drink. This is in the classroom or in the welding shop as well. It's not really prohibited by the school in the classroom. We do that because people are slops. That's one of our rules. Out in the shop, there is actually safety reasons why we don't want that taking place. Um, we don't like things being spilled out there. It causes uh, housekeeping issues and also it could cause electric shock problems or anything like that. So if you do need to have something to drink out there in the shop, take a bottle of water with a screw on cap and leave the cap screwed on when you're not drinking out of it. Just makes things easier on the rest of us. This is a tobacco free campus. This is a federal law. That means there's no dip, chew, snuff, cigarellos, vapes, e-cigs, Cuban cigars, you know, that kind of stuff. Can't have anything like that on campus. They'd be out in the parking lot, can't be out there in the parking lot smoking it up or anything like that. And I can't believe I have to even write this down, but no drugs or alcohol are permitted on campus. So you hear a lot of teachers say, oh, whatever you do on your own time is your business. That is not what we're talking about here. You get loaded before you come to class and it could get somebody hurt. We do not want to do that. Do not show up to class impaired. What you do on your own time is definitely our business, so don't do it. And another one I didn't think I'd have to write down, the uh, no weapons policy. I, mean, I had a whole list of weapons lined out to rattle off for this one, but um, guns, knives, you know, slingshots, bow and arrows, I don't know, little bolos, psi, that kind of stuff. Grenade launchers, you know, just uh, leave any kind of weapons or projectile firearms at home. Leave them at home. Don't even bring them in your vehicle. All right, we're going to go into PPE. This is personal protective equipment. This is the stuff that you are going to need to wear every day in the welding shop. So we are going to start with over here not wearing the proper PPE requires great caution. This is why I put this in yellow. It is for this re well, there it is. PPE are caution signs. All the signs you see are going to be the yellow with the black contrast. High school students are going to have their PPE supplied to them while the college, you guys are going to have to supply your own. This has to do with fast food and some other things. Not really sure. That's just what the agreement is. So 
each item needed for the shop work will be discussed in great detail. You will have an exact list of what it is that you need if you don't already have by this point of seeing this video. So to start, we'll start at the bottom, come on up with it. Boots. You will need a pair of work boots. You can do shoes, you can do shoes if you want to. They need to be leather, they need to be high top. You can do laces if you want to, but they're gonna burn off. If you want an ideal pair of shoes, they need to be slip on leather work boots, non-slip, insulated, waterproof. It would be smart to have steel toed, but we're not we're not gonna require that you have steel toes. Just uh, make sure that they're leather and not basketball shoes or sandals or something goofy like that. There we go. Slip-ons are required. Open toe shoes of any kind are not permitted. So we're talking Crocs, flip-flops, shower shoes, anything like that. You will not go out in the welding shop if you show up with that to class. Protective clothing. This is a good idea. Fire retardant clothing, FRCs. You can get these at Tractor Supply Company. I don't know if you guys have Norselands down here, but I know you could probably pick something like that up at Walmart. Dickies, that kind of stuff. It's a little cheaper made, but it, it'll do the trick. Long sleeves. You need to have your clothes tucked in if necessary. I know some people don't wear stuff like that that uh, even needs to be tucked in. If it's a form-fitting shirt, then then I wouldn't worry about it too much. There we go. Form-fitting jeans or work pants. You cannot have holes or frays in any of your clothes. If you have a fray or the slightest bit of a like frizz coming off of your clothes, a spark hits that, it's going to ignite. It'll go up. That's... Uh, why it's also best to not have any uh, big holes or anything like that because if one of them big sparks comes and falls down that hole and gets inside your jeans or something it's that little thing rolls around and burns you about 15 times before it gets cool enough to fall out so uh you don't really want to experience that but it, i mean it's almost unavoidable you're going to experience it at least once loose jewelry is prohibited Tight jewelry, wear at your own risk. You know, they'll tell, I, nobody's going to tell you you can't wear a wedding band. Nobody's going to tell you that you can't wear earrings. But the same way, when a hot piece of metal hits that ring, it is going to turn red hot almost instantaneously, and you will not be able to get it off because it's going to stick to your finger. This is painful. It's going to peel the skin off with it when you try getting it off. It's really, really best. If you don't wear any jewelry when you're out there, anything metal, you know, a metal is a good heat conductor and that kind of stuff. It seems like a good idea until it's not. High gauntlet gloves. These gloves are going to have the, uh, the ends of them that come up to, you know, somewhere in here. They're made for welding and cutting. You can actually um, get gloves specific for what you're trying to weld on they make stick welding gloves mig welding gloves they make gloves specifically for cutting and you know other ones like uh, tig welding if you do not have a preference as to what kind of gloves you get it is best to go with either stick mig welding gloves or cutting gloves they're the thickest ones that will do all the processes that would probably be your best. They're also the thickest and you least likely to have burns. If you get a thin, real thin pair of TIG welding gloves and you go out there and you're running a cutting torch, there's a good chance that your gloves are going to be too thin and you might end up getting a burn anyway, even with your gloves on. So keep that in mind when you're picking out what kind of gloves you want to have. Safety glasses. The safety glasses are going to need to be clear or indoor-outdoor glasses. You do not wear tinted or shaded like sunglasses type of safety glasses indoors. Now, if you have a pair of dark glasses you want to wear while you're outside under the awning, that's fine. But inside, they need to be clear or indoor-outdoor. This is an OSHA standard as well. 
they do need to be Z87.1 rated, which is an ANSI regulation. And if it does have a little plus sign behind it, or it says like Z98, what that plus means is Z87 or any number higher than Z87 is, is what we're looking for. It'll have it stamped on the inside of the glasses right here on the, the side piece there. You'll be able to tell if it's the kind that you need. Almost any glasses that you buy, safety glasses wise, at Walmart or Tractor Supply or something like that will be Z87.1 Plus glasses. These glasses must be worn 100% of the time in the welding shop. This is because we've already went over the flying debris in the first section. At Stuff's Everywhere, you have your glasses on. It can do a pretty good job at keeping that stuff out of your eyes and keep you from having to go to the doctor to get something pulled out of your eye. If you wear prescription glasses, we do have some prescription safety glasses that we can help you out with. If not, or you don't feel comfortable with the ones we give you, um, you can get side shields, but we don't really have the side shields there to disperse to everybody. It'd probably be best if you go pick up your own side shields for your own safety glasses. Hearing protection. There are multiple types of hearing protection. You can wear whatever kind it is that suits you. You can even wear multiple types of hearing protection at the same time. I hit that in one of these little clauses. Disposable earplugs are the most common, and they are the cheapest. Therefore, that's the ones that we are going to supply. They need to be worn 100% of the time while in the shop because there's always some kind of loud noise going. And another OSHA standard says that anything over 80 decibels is something that you need to have hearing protection for. 80 decibels is not that much. If I talk to you in just an elevated tone, I can hit 80 decibels. So that's why we say 100% of the time they need to be worn in the shop. Like I said just a little bit ago, you can wear more than one kind. Maybe put disposable earplugs in and then have the over-the-ear muffs on top of that if you wanted the extra protection. Not really necessary, but teach his own. Here's some optional personal protective equipment. The welding beanie. This is one that you are going to want to have. It is got a flap that's going to cover one ear. When you go to welding something above your head or something to the side, you're going to lean your head around to look to see what it is you're doing. If a spark falls off of that weld, it'll go right down your ear and buckle you. It will buckle your knees until you hit the ground. Screw up your equilibrium. That's going to be one of them things that I think every welder is going to experience at least once. These welding beanies will combat that, and they they do a couple of different things. They can also keep the uh, keep your sweat from soaking into your welding gear and all that, and they can also keep your welding hood from uh, pulling your hair and stuff when you're wearing it. I put a picture on here that shows a bunch of different styles and types. You can get one, whatever you can dream of, you can get a pattern to have a welding beanie done in that. But because we have guys and girls in the shop, it's best if we keep this tasteful. If the welding beanie is distasteful, I will take it from you. That's just, uh, you should you should know better. I don't feel sorry for you if you get it taken away. Here we go. They are not required, but the added protection is something that you just, you can't even imagine how much, how awesome they are when you uh when you need them leathers these are going to come in multiple styles kinds and types you're going to have some that can protect your neck some that can protect your legs feet you can have a shop apron that can connect your midsection and also extra protection for your hands these are really good against burns it's almost like a second set of skin or something and you can have one two or all of them you can wear all the accessories at the same time if you want to it just look like one big piece of leather now nah, hit that right there if you did have all of them on you sure wouldn't have nothing to worry about but it would be hot this is why most of the 
leather sleeves that you would wear to weld in have detachable parts that come off so you don't have to wear the whole thing all the time because they do get extremely hot when you start to sweat your gloves get wet and then we go into the electric shock like we covered in the first one Whew. there we go that's going to be section three of it and yeah catch you on the next one